Yep. So this is graph theory session. My I am Siddhant. Uh, and that's pretty much it. So let's start off. And uh, in case you have any doubts, like in between or anything, either you can unmute yourself or sometimes people are shy. So you can even uh, write on the chat and uh, like prefer to make all your messages for everyone so that other people can also see your doubt and like, yeah, they know what doubt I'm talking about. All right. Um, so I'll start sharing my screen. And I think you guys can see the chat window. I hope you guys can see it. All right. So uh, the agenda for today is, uh, firstly, we'll give me a moment to remove this. Yeah. Uh, binary lifting to calculate. So I looked at the votes for the poll that we conducted before. And I mean, I'm still confused about what whether we should cover BFS or Dijkstra, but for the first topic, I'm quite confident that we should cover this, which is how do you calculate the lowest common ancestor in a tree uh, for two nodes uh, fast that is in log n. So there's a slow method which we like quickly go through or something, but like, yeah, the slow method is kind of like order n-ish. This method is, so we'll first cover the idea sketch on pen and paper and then like you can just see the agenda. Then we'll explain how to do path aggregates using that lowest common ancestor thing. So in path aggregates, what I mean is a question, something of the sort given Q, which is big, like around 10 to the power five queries of the format U comma V, find the max value in the the path from u to v uh path here means simple path uh i'll explain simple path later a bit but like the idea of simple path is that in a tree you can't like go back that's the simplest route possible from u to v you can't just like keep on traversing a node multiple times that's not allowed in a simple path so then we'll do a code demo of the normal binary lifting technique along with this path aggregation which so uh, as a motivation to solve, like to do this technique, we can solve Enoch one. And I think I have the problem somewhere. Here. Yeah, Enoch one. Uh, Enoch one has a relatively much simpler solution also. So it's not like that this solution is the only solution. The easier solution exploits perfect sums idea. We won't go through that solution. Uh, finally, we'll show try to show an analogy between a straight line tree with path aggregates uh with respect to a sparse table okay and for the second topic i'm not sure how many people are there on the chat but like we can have a vote here to just see how many people on the zoom call are familiar with bfs or extra i obviously assume more people are familiar with bfs but i just want to get a voting so if the vote says like if we get a kind of like a vibe that a lot, a lot of people don't know extra then we can just cover the bfs thingy but if we feel that enough people or quite a good number of people know Dijkstra, then we can, oh, I mean, there is a proper poll. I'll just open it up like in, a, in some way. Uh, you don't have to put on the chat. Uh, yeah, but if we feel that a lot of people do know BFS already, then we can cover the Dijkstra one because in the previous voting, technically Dijkstra one, but like, I'm not sure like how many people will be familiar. Like, like the techniques that I want to cover in for Dijkstra, I would be assuming that you know the basic Dijkstra. That is like the priority queue or the set or whatever log ish one data structure that you use and you implement just a basic extra. I'll assume that you know how the basic extra works and then we can do variants upon it because in comparative generally, they, they, there are very few questions in which a classic extra is used. So let me see. If we have... Okay, we have 36 participants. Okay, let's let's just start with the first topic first, and then we can like once we have enough participants, then we can do the poll for the second topic, which is either BFS or extra. Uh, you don't have to put on the chat. I mean, there is no particular reason because I can't keep track of that. Okay, so can people see the whiteboard? Just like reply on the chat. I don't think. Cool. So the first topic is lowest common ancestor, which people a lot of times say LCF. 
the idea is let's say you're given a tree okay. i'm assuming everyone knows what a tree is a tree is basically n nodes n minus one edges no cycles and everything connected right if you have all these properties i mean technically you just need the first three properties or like whatever first second fourth property but like yeah you obviously need the first and second property um so yeah let's say you have a tree and then like uh i'll not motivate it right now but let's say the question asks you to find the lowest common ancestor of two nodes so let's say this is the node u and this is the node v that means we are trying to find the bottommost guy who is an ancestor of both of them by ancestor here i mean he's like uh okay example for you use ancestors are this guy this guy this guy these all three are use ancestors because they are above you but example uh this guy is not a use ancestor because he's not above you in the sense that in his subtree u is not there all right so all these three red guys are u's ancestor and then for v this guy this guy this guy this guy are v's ancestors right this is the v and this is the u now what the question asks is basically the, the lowest common ancestor so in this case the lowest common ancestor is this guy not this guy because he is the bottom most one who is a common guy common as in he is an ancestor of both of them u as well as v so generally when you define lca you define for two guys so lca of u comma v is a node is a node which is like which i just defined here that it's the lowest guy who is an ancestor to both of them right so i hope everyone is clear what lca the word means in graph theory in tree general that you're the lowest guy who's common and an ancestor to both of them by ancestor here we mean that you lie in the parentage of that guy so you can think of it like a family tree also this is the grandparent maybe this is his two children there are three children of blah 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 then ancestor technically means family ancestry that this guy's family ancestry is these three guys i mean probably that's how the word originates right uh any doubts in the def very definition of lca if yes then please speak up otherwise we can just move forward like assume that you know what lca means okay so and now uh, the slow solution so let's say you're given u comma v and in o n you will find the lca of u comma v right so in this case in this graph the slow solution is basically okay first do a dfs on the tree okay hath patel asked me to repeat uh hath uh, we just explained the definition of lca lca like what does lca stands for lowest common ancestor for a, for two nodes in a given tree and the definition is basically more or less that you are given two nodes u and v who's their lowest common ancestor it speaks for itself but like yeah the ancestors of u are the nodes in red the ancestors of v are the nodes in green and the bottom most guy who is both an ancestor of red and uh, sorry who is both an ancestor of u and v so it's this guy right it's not this guy because he's not the bot uh, it's not this guy because he is not the bottom most one cool yeah so yeah how do you do it in order n that's the first question yeah this was you this was we yeah so for the order in the slow method the idea is that you first do okay in either method you first have to do a dfs on the tree and get some information of the tree and then this slow method is per query on right this is per query on that's the slow method and the fast method is per query log in so that is what we will be aiming for but we'll first go through the slow method so that you guys at least understand what's the slow method uh 
So first you do a DFS on the tree and basically give each node a height. Let's say we start from zero. So this good node's height is zero. This node's height is one. This node's height is one. This node's height is two, two, two. You can get these heights by by a DFS or something. Right. I'm just putting all the heights. Now, once you got, so uh, obviously I, I'm expecting everyone knows the definition of a height here. It's pretty intuitive. How much, like what's the distance between you and the root? How far are you from the root? And this is the root, right? So now the question becomes that this is you and this is V. Now the algorithm for a slow LCA, slow lowest common ancestor finding is basically take the out of U and V, let's say you have U, uh, okay, you let u dash be u, let v dash be v. Now, whichever guy is deeper in the tree, make him climb one step up. Okay, so you can unmute yourself in between if you want to, and also you can post your doubts on the chat, and I'll like I'll obviously reply to them. And uh, because I'm sharing on iPad, you can't see the other people's doubts, so I'll just. I like I'll first say out the doubt here on orally and then I'll also reply. Yeah. So the slow method is you let's say you have u dash and v dash. Like let's say you start with these two variables, which are u and v itself. And then whichever guy is the deeper guy, here deeper means which has more height, who lies at the bottom of the tree out of these two, will climb one step up. So here v is like lower than u. So so we will climb one step up and come here, right? Once he comes here, so u dash will now be again this guy u, and v dash will technically be parent of v, right? And now once we are at the parent of v, then we'll again compare there to compare the heights of the two guys. His height is three, his height is three. So now we can arbitrarily pick anyone and just climb them one more step up again, and keep on doing this. And what's the breaking condition? The breaking condition is when both the nodes u dash and v dash are equal. That's the breaking condition. So in terms of pseudocode, it will look something like, okay. Also, I forgot to mention this one thing that with the heights, you'll also have parents. So this guy will know that his parent is minus one, which is basically nothing. This guy will know that his parent is this guy. This guy will know that his parent is this guy, so on. Uh, I'll give a more concrete example. So I didn't label the tree nodes there in the, in the other tree. Let's label the nodes here. Okay, so let's say this is our tree, right? And we are trying to find the LC of seven comma 12. So this guy and this guy, right? Okay, quickly get the heights of all the guys. I won't put all the heights. I'll just do something like this. I mean, otherwise the diagram becomes pretty messy. So I'll just put the heights over here. But otherwise you're actually calculating the heights of every node and also the parents of every node. So in parents, I can give you an example. This guy's parent is minus one. So we put P equal minus one here. This guy's parent is one because he one basically the ID of the node who's your parent. This guy's parent is also one. He's the parent, right? Four's parent is three. Five's parent is also three. Six parents is also three. Seven's parent is four. Eight's parent is four. Ninth parent is five. So on. Tenth parent is nine. 11, 9, 12, 11, 13, 11. Just see the parent and like put it there. And like in a DFS, I will just show in the code how you actually get the parent. So it's reasonably simple. Now the code, like, okay. So you are, you are trying for seven and 12, right? Who is the deeper guy who has a more height? 12, right? He has height five, whereas seven has height three. So you'll make him climb one step up. So he'll come to 11 now. Now you're comparing. So basically the problem of finding LCA of seven comma 12 got simplified to finding the LC of seven comma 11. It's the same thing because once you climb one step up, it's the same thing. The LC of seven comma 12 will be the exact same thing as the answer for LC of seven comma 11. Now we'll again see in seven comma 11, who is the guy that's deeper? 11 is still deeper. 11's height is four, seven's height is three. So we'll make him climb one more step up. And now that goes to seven comma nine. Now we'll again ask whose height is deeper. 
let's say because they both are heights are equal seven is also on height three nine is also on height three so we'll just pick any of them let's say we pick seven and we make seven climb one step up so now seven will go to four right here and so it becomes four comma nine so you have these two pointers one pointer starts at seven the other pointer starts at 12 and gradually they both move up so this guy keeps on moving up 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 and this guy also keeps on moving up 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 and the rule for moving is whoever is deeper gets to move and whoever is yeah whoever is deeper gets to move and because of that they meet for the first time at the lowest common ancestor itself so once you are at 4 comma 9 who is the deeper guy four's height is 2 nine's height is 3 so nine will move right and nine will move to 5 so 4 comma 5 and once you are at 4 comma 5 both the heights are again equal so you can move any of them let's say you move 4 again so it becomes 3 comma 5 because 4 went here and then in 3 comma 5 5 is deeper right 5 heights is 2 3's height is 1 so 5 will move one step up and he will come to 3 comma 3 now you'll stop here because these two nodes are equal here at any at any of the previous stages both the nodes never became equal so you never stopped the terminating condition for this algorithm is that both the nodes became equal once both the nodes became equal, this is the LCA. So three is the LCA, that's it. Three is the lowest common system. So the, in, in terms of code, the rule is something like this. While u not equal v, uh, if height of u is greater or equal height of v, then we say u is equal to parent of u. Otherwise we say, v is equal to parent of v that's it and eventually lca is equal to u that's how simple the code looks when we read 7 comma 9 why didn't we go to 4 comma 5 directly okay someone asked me this open the okay let me see we are at 7 comma 9 why didn't we go to 4 comma 5 directly okay you can go to 4 comma 5 directly technically you know that both of them are at the same height and they are not the same. So both of them do have to climb up. But I mean, just the algorithmic implementation is in such a way that you do it step by step. So in one step, you only move one guy one step up. But if you wanted to, you could do this. Like example, you would change. How would you change this code if you wanted to do what you said? You would do this and then else if H. So he basically said that if both the guys are at equal height, we can just move both the guys together. And otherwise, like we have one more else which is basically they're equal, then we'll say u is equal to p comma u comma v is equal to p comma v, right? Even this will work. I mean, it's still, this is also correct. It's just like slightly more code and yeah, like might be a bit confusing, but yeah, it's correct. That if both of them are at the same height in the tree, like here seven and nine are at the same height in the tree, but they are not the same value. So you can move both of them up. You know that both of them definitely need to move up to find the LCA. So basically the idea of picking the deeper guy and moving him up is that you're definitely sure that he needs to move up to be able to find the LCA. Let's say you were, you started at seven comma 12. You can't move seven up in the first step. Why? Because let's say 12 was actually somewhere here. Like there was, okay. I mean, the, the diagram gets dirty pretty quickly, but let's say this was the tree, right? This was seven. And let's say this was 12. Now, had you moved seven up earlier, you would have already lost. You would have already made the answer incorrect because the LCA technically is seven itself. For seven and 12, who is the lowest guy who's common to both of them? Seven and himself, right? So that's why you always move the deeper guy up because if you move the shallower guy up, the problem is that you sometimes might just skip the answer and go above the answer. By above, I mean you go above the height at which the answer can lie. Are you changing the day? Anupam asked, are you changing the data structure to move to parent or are you finding parent for each node in each run? Okay, Anupam, we earlier said that in a one DFS, we'll do a DFS originally, like one DFS, in which we'll find heights of all the guys here at the depot as heights and also the parents of all the guys. So literally there will be a height array and a parent array. And we'll fill this array using one DFS. And after that, for each query, let's say we got a query 7 comma 12, we can find the answer in ON using this algorithm. I mean, I'll just write the simpler version here because uh, one more line. LCA is equal to yeah. 
using this algorithm we'll find the thing uh, abhishek asks this is the slow method of the past one this is the slow method abhishek because look at this this is actually running pretty slow and like in each step we are just climbing one parent up so think about the worst case of this algorithm the worst case is let's say i give you a tree in which one guy lies at the very bottom okay and the other guy lies at the extreme end these two guys are the u and v then you'll take and rough like like let's say this is n by 2 and this is also n by 2 the height i'm referring to right then you'll take n by 2 steps to come here and n by 2 steps to come here which is the lcm so this will take order n like in the worst case this algorithm will take order n okay uh abhish yeah so technically the tree can be of any height that's why it's slow because like if you're very far from the lc you'll take a long time to go to the lc let's say this is the lc and this is u this is v you'll take a long time if these two distances are big right okay so now the fast method so the idea of moving the deeper guy up still remains the same that we'll move the deeper guy quickly okay uh one thing that now we want to do is we want to do a binary jumping thing which is we want to move fast so okay how should we go about this let me think let's say this is u this is no let's say this is u this is v right yeah so okay i'll explain it this way yeah first okay don't think about the tree that much like okay just think about the slow method that's the important thing in the slow method notice what was the first step the first step was let's say you have height of u as 10 and height of v as like let's say very big number 40 the first thing that you did was indirectly moved v to its 30th parent such that okay so, and let this parent be v dash 30th parent of v such that height of v dash is 10 basically you move the deeper guy up 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 so much that both of them become of the same height and then we do step by step thingy right like in this algorithm notice let's say v is of a very big height then this else condition will be triggered a lot of times for the first few iterations and once they both become equal then one step will take u the next in the next iteration we will take one step and so on till the time they become equal so like if you just think about this algorithm what's happening is that the deeper guy which i'm assuming is v is getting moved a lot of times to match till the height of u and then they both are moving together step by step right so can okay let's say yeah can you do this movement fast that's the first question like let's say we know that the height of u is 10 and we know that the height of v is 40 now we want to find the 30th parent of v can we find this 30th parent of v fast okay that's the question so notice that to find the 30th parent of v you can say i am trying to find the break 13 powers of 2 so what is 30 30 is 16 plus 8 plus 4 plus 2 i think 24 uh, 20 30 yeah so this much parent of v that's what i'm trying to find right and i can say i know what's the 16th parent of okay now comes the magical part so in the tree originally what we were doing was what we were doing were that we were just maintaining the parents right this guy knew his parent 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 it etc right now we will maintain some extra information also which is like slightly tricky so just understand try to understand this part as much as better as you can in this kind of question in the given tree can any two nodes have the same value ps then how do we identify whether the pop comes here i mean no the nodes cannot have same value because you're considering the nodes as having labels in any graph question you do no two nodes can have the same node id i'm 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 talking about the node id i'm not talking about the value each node might have a different value like maybe the question is like each node is let's say a city so each city is different but maybe cities have populations and like two cities can have the same population but here what we are trying to compare on is the city name or the city node id which has to be different yeah that's a good question bro so yeah let's say we have this tree right uh, originally we just had the parent array 
Kutab Puri asked, why are we taking power of two? Uh, I'll explain this later. I'm not trying to explain it now. It's pretty tricky. I mean, it's the same logic as like uh, squaring, uh, sorry, power, like binary exponentiation or binary search. In, in any algorithm, you never take powers of three or powers of five or something because the log n factor becomes worse. Like in, if you start taking some different power, the complexity becomes worse. So that's why people generally tend to prefer the binary breakage. Yeah. Uh, so in, like, okay. Now let me concentrate. So originally we had this information that each node know its, knows its parent, right? Now we'll have this extra information that each node knows its parent. Parent, okay. Second parent, okay. Fourth parent, eighth parent, and so on. Every power of tooth parent. Okay, so the idea is like P U I will denote who is the two to the power ith parent of U. This is what P U I will denote. This is a very important definition. I mean, in like lowest common ancestor fast. In a binary tree, the edges are directed downward, right? I don't understand how we can move upwards. You're not, okay, you're just, then you're just maintaining who is your parent. That's it, in a DFS, in a single DFS. You just maintain that. And then, now you can move up because you know who's my parent. Like you, you already, like, in this tree, node five, like somewhere in the array, P of five was stored to be three. That means five's parent is three. This was stored after the single DFS. So now when, when we are at five, five can just look at this value P five and know that, okay, my parent is three. I can just move up. Like technically you're not moving up. You're just changing the variable. You're just changing the variable V to its parents variable. It's parents node ID. Like obviously this is just a visual representation of what's happening, but like only the variables are being changed actually. Yeah. So you have this two to the power ith parent of you, right? Now, first forget how you construct this. Let's say we have this somehow. So I'll give you an example. This is a bad tool because I don't have IDs. Let's have one, two, three. I'll make a very like deep tree because I want to show what all information will be there. Okay, so now, here, example, parent of 11, 0. P 11, 0, what will it be? Like, can, you, can anyone answer what will P 11, 0 be? Here is 11. I want to see whether people get the definition. Like, according to this definition, who will be P 11, 0? First parent of 11, yes, 10, correct. And what will be P 11, 1? The second parent, which is 9. And P 11, 2? the fourth parent, which is four. Correct. Yeah. So everyone got this, right? That what I'm, am I trying to store in the P11 array? P11 three will be by default. I think it will jump up. So by default, you try to keep it minus one or zero, like some default value. I generally keep it, I think minus, I think zero, I generally keep it zero, but that's an implementation detail. And then all the future ones also will be zero. Right. So that's like, okay. Now everyone knows that what our PUI array will look like. Uh, forget about how we construct this, but I will like explain later that we can construct it in n log n time, this entire array, once we have done the first DFS. Once you have this array, the idea is, let's say you are doing the lowest common ancestor of six and 11. Then you'll say, what's the difference in their heights? Okay, so this guy's height is zero. This guy's height is one, like these guys. This layer is two, this layer is three, this layer is four. This layer is six, sorry, five, this layer is six. So what's the difference between the six and three? Three, right? So the difference in the heights is three, right? So we'll say we want to make 11 climb three steps up, which is basically to seven, but like that's what in code we are saying that we want to climb 11, three steps up. Now we don't have this information directly that how, how will we climb him three steps up? So we say break three in its powers of two, which is two plus one, okay? And then, First, make him climb two parents up, 
which is from 11 you go for two parents up what is this this is two to the power one and this is two to the power zero so one here so you refer to this position right and you just go to nine two parents up you have this information stored here and then from nine you'll ask go one parent up because this is this p11 2 11 greater than 10 greater than 9 greater than 7 i mean why i don't understand why you use the greater sign because technically the node ids can be jumbled but yeah otherwise it's correct yeah the, the idea is correct that okay not okay go to okay no p11 2 technically just means that who's the sorry p11 2 technically means who's the fourth parent of 11 right which is 4 p11 2 means the fourth parent of 11 why because p11 2 stands by this definition which is who is the two to the part two, which is four, the fourth parent of 11. So that's just four. You don't really store the path. You just store who is it. Okay. So we were at 11 and we wanted to jump three steps up, right? And we said three can be broken as two to the power one plus two to the power zero in its binary representation. So we said first make two to the power one sized jump from 11 and you come to nine. Now notice you have a P nine zero, a P nine one also. Can anyone tell me what the values will be? You, you have this entire thing for all possible values of u, right? So it's for n possible values of u and log n possible values of i. So p90 will be 7, correct? And p91 will be, for example, 4 and so on. You can calculate all of these also if you want. Like they, you, they will be calculated. Yeah, let me make sure. So now once we have climbed two steps up and we are at 9, now we'll ask 9, okay, who's your zeroth parent? like two to the power zero to parent. So we'll refer to this value and go to seven and we are done. So we, does everyone understand how we nullify the difference? Initially, the difference was three and now we killed the difference. How did we kill the difference in generic terms? Let's say you had this big tree where you was here and then there were a lot of nodes and then we was here. Okay. There might be some other stuff here also, but like that's the important part. And okay. Not the you was let's say here. So we wanted to climb v till this stage right to get the same height the idea is take the difference of the heights let's say the difference of the heights is 12. Uh, let's take a better example 13 and then break 13 and its powers of 2 which is 2 to the power 3 plus 2 to the power 2 plus 2 to the power 0 right 8 plus 4 plus 1 then say okay for v who is his 2 to the power 3 th parent so you'll say basically make v dash equal to parent of v comma 3 then you'll say make v double dash equal to so you'll move here v dash which is eight steps above him now you'll say make v double dash equals to p v dash comma two from v dash you'll again move four steps up and go to v double dash that's what this statement is doing and then from v double dash you'll say v triple dash is equal to p v double dash zero zero here because this is the binary representation that's why i'm doing these specific jumps and then you'll go till some node here which is at the same height as node u. Okay, yeah, people are asking. Yeah, this method is mainly required if you have a large number of queries. Like if you're asked a lot of LCS of u comma v, u comma v for different pairs, and for each pair you want to answer pretty fast because there are a lot of pairs coming in. So you want to do each pair fast, that's in order login or in order one or whatever. This method works in login. Yeah. So now once you've climbed till v triple dash, okay, then you can like, then you got two nodes at the same height and then you can do the step-by-step -step method that we explained earlier, right? Does everyone get this part? How we nullified the height difference and got till the same step, got the both the nodes at the same height and we did this fast. That's also important to note that we broke them in binary representation and then we just did log in steps here at most because the height can, the height difference can only be at most N and it's binary representation will only have log in terms. Like the number of terms here will only be log. Okay. I hope like if anyone has a doubt here, they should stop me or ask a doubt on the chat. Is there a need to jump in decreasing order? Okay. Nice question. No, not really. I mean, you could do the first jump as two to the power two sized and then two to the power three size and then a two to the power zero size. You could do different size. Like it's like, it's not necessary for these three numbers to be in this order. You can even switch them around and it will still work because it's saying you have a height difference of 13. Either you cover it eight, four, one or you maybe cover it one eight four nobody cares you just have to cover the difference distance after getting equal heights okay why can't we directly jump to the same level i mean 
how will you jump to the same level that you don't understand code 15 question you don't know the 13th parent of v that's the issue so you can't like you but you do know what's the fourth parent of you v you do know what's the eighth parent what's the 16th parent but you don't know who is the 13th parent you only stored limited information here you haven't stored all the parents like all like the first parent the second parent so on of you you have only stored powers of two because you don't want to waste a lot of time computing this also right so you can't just jump directly to that same level even though you know you have to go to that level but you know do who is b's ancestor in that level in this level which node is the guy who is ancestoring b or there is only one guy in this level who is ancestoring b but we don't know that guy so this is the way to find them okay devan after the step okay sunny has explained the time complexity thing so sunny the idea is for the time complexity at least the difference in the two heights let's say height of u is something height of v is something the difference can only be at most n right it will be less than equal n and when you break it in its binary representation you will have only log n bits right so only 2 to the power sum term plus 2 to the power sum term da 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 but only log n different terms you will have and for each term oh sorry which have asked me doubts from the youtube session okay for each term what you'll do is basically you'll refer to your parent table and make a jump associated with that size can we do it recursively okay in actual implementation you will i think most people prefer to do it iteratively but you can do it recursively and always check the unv value yes you will check the unv value but like whether they hit equal or not okay let's go ahead in the question like in the algorithm i don't think we can waste our time on like i think everyone understood the idea that we have to nullify the difference and to do that we uh represent it in binary representation and then make the jumps right so now once we've killed all the difference we know at this step that u and v might be at the same height and like okay so now u and v are at the same height they might be the same guy that is they are actually referred to referring to the same guy example let's say this was the tree u was here v was here now the height difference is 2 right v will climb two steps up in order 1 and then u and v will technically be the same thing so at that point only you should return it as the answer because they are the same thing but otherwise if they are not the same thing that means you have this so this is case 1 when this is a simpler case that when v climbs up and they both become of same height they are actually pointing at the same guy so you just check if u equal equal be return u that is u is your answer right but what's the case 2 which is the tricky case that is that they are not the same guy but they are on the same level that's it that's the only information that you have let's say this is u this is v now here they are at the same height but they are still technically not the same guy but they are at the same height so now at this point you you like in the original question you had some u comma v now in this question you have a v u comma v but you know that the height of u is definitely equal to the height of v that's the additional information that you have right now yes i'm explaining the lc problem so how to do this like how to solve this when they are at the same height but technically two different guys right and you want to do it fast also in the slow method you could still do it in order and that is like basically just make each person climb one step up blah 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 and wait till the time they hit right but we want to do this fast the idea is that you have that parent array right you had this important parent array which is which i'll refer to again and again like that's the key of this algorithm this thing you had this 2d parent array now in this 2d parent array you can use this 2d parent array how you'll say okay intuitively think about this what will p u of 10 be the same as p v of 10 in this above tree will it will they be the same yes and wrong answer yeah correct basically if you take any big number here what i'm trying to ask is 2 to the power x parent of u parent of u will probably match with 2 to the power x parent of v right if x is pretty big like let's say x is 10 that means i'm asking 
of u versus 1000th parent of v 1024th parent of u versus 1024th parent of v which will be the same here notice the first parent of u is different for the first parent of v but the second parents of both the guys are same right so correct rockstar is correct that we need to do some sort of binary search here so the property that you have is let's say you have this thing that uh okay so basically the idea is hmm let me define something okay let's define this f u h refers to h parent of u okay that is what f u h denotes so f u 0 is something f v 0 is something f u 1 is something f v 1 is something h parent okay sorry it's the h parent or technically there is no zero first parent so f u 1 basically denotes the first parent f u 2 denotes the second parent i'm not i'm not talking about powers of twos here i'm just talking about the h parent that's it not the 2 to the power h parent this is a simpler definition okay and then f of v comma 2 f of u comma 3 f of v comma 3 and so on notice at some st- at like initial values they will mismatch but at some point they will become equal let's say the f of u comma 6 and f of v comma 6 once they become equal they will always remain equal can everyone see this like intuitively that why they'll mismatch for the first bunch of times for the first few times and then once they become equal the first time they'll always remain equal the idea is this like why i am saying this let's say you had this tree this is u this is v now the first parents mismatch this guy mismatches with this guy the second parents mismatch the third parents mismatch top i messed it up a bit let me draw it again so the idea is this let's say you have this three i'm not drawing at the same height technically so that's an issue yeah so this is u this is v now the first parents are different right the second parents are also different the third parents are also different the fourth parent is the same now once the fourth parent became the same it's obvious to see that the fifth parent will also remain the same the sixth parent will also remain the same the seventh parent will also remain the same so on right because once they become same technically moving one step up for both of them is the same thing like here you will also move one step up we will also move one step up but they will still point at the same thing because both of them are at the same node right so everyone agrees with me that this property will be true that for some time for the first few parents will mismatch but then for the first time when we match we are done and we want to find this position actually the first position that they match that's the lca here the lca was the first position that they matched their parents match the first position not any position but the first position so this is a binary searchable function in the sense this value is a miss of like it's monotonic in the sense that you're getting a few mismatches and then you're getting a match and then you'll keep on getting a match everyone agrees with me that this is binary searchable in some sense like there are few mismatches first and then a mismatch and we want to find this first match okay so there is a log square n approach to do this using binary search and another complicated thing but i'll just directly go to the log n approach because that's simpler idea the idea is it's it's slightly different from the standard binary search that you guys see the idea is you start with a very big power of 2 and then you keep on chopping it let me explain this way uh let's say this is the lca okay it has a bunch of parents above it we don't care about this portion and it has a bunch of guys below it and then u comes here and then v comes here there are a bunch of guys in between we don't care and there are a bunch of guys in between we don't care but the heights are same of u and v okay we don't care about the height also to be honest yeah we don't care about a lot of stuff but that's the generic structure right u and v will be two node there will be an lca and there will be some parentage of lca that's the generic thing that you always look for in a lca question that that's how the tree looks i mean just ignore all the other parts 
even though there are other parts just ignore them mentally because you know that you won't use them now the idea is take a very big power of 2 the highest power of 2 that you can take so let's say n is 100 then what's the highest power of 2 uh just x seeding this or something uh we want to take seeding no 64 is the highest power of 2 right just below it so which is 2 to the power 8 so you'll say p u 8 does it match with p v 8 or not that's the question that you lost does it match if it matches then you say we climb that much up okay 100 is actually a pretty big example i shouldn't take that because otherwise it's it's going to be very exhausting for us to understand the technique i'll take a simple example and rahu i'll explain this later i i haven't explained it i know this i'll explain this later that how we populate the values it's a simple recurrence you'll get this quickly if you know basic dp um hmm let me give an example like to explain this i'll take the values as okay yeah let's say this height difference is 13 yeah that 13 is a good number here. yeah let's say the height number is 13 okay now and let's say the total height of the tree like okay n let's say n is going to be pretty small that is n is i don't know 50 yeah say n is 50 okay now below 50 what's the highest power of 2 32 so you'll say is pu5 same as pv5 you lost this question are these two values same in your algorithm they will be the same because technically after the 13th parent everything matches so the 32th parent that is this is basically fu32 right and this is fv32 and we know by a fact that fu13 will start matching with fv13 let's say i already tell you the answer obviously you don't know this information but if we, had we known this information we know that this will match because this matches we drop from 5 to 4 Okay, so now we ask the same question for sixteen. That is, is F U sixteen the same as F V sixteen? Are they the same? We ask this question, and yes, they are the same again. Because after the thirteen parent, everything matched, right? Now we again dropped one more step. So from five we went to four. Now from four we'll go to three, like two to the power three. That's the idea. So in binary we are going decreasing. Okay, now we ask, is F U? Oh, oh, my battery died. Okay, the thing's battery died. So, meanwhile, I'll explain some portion on the editor, like till the time it charges. I think it'll take like fifteen minutes, something ten minutes maybe. Okay, so I'll go through the first part of the implementation. Okay, that is how do we write the? Everyone can see the editor screen, right? I'm assuming everyone can. I I I disconnected from the discussion because my iPad battery died, like in the pencil, the stylus. Ah, uh, I'll go through the explain. I'll go through the code up till the point that we have explained till now, not beyond that portion. Okay. Like so, how will the question look like generically speaking? the question will have a tree like okay oh and tree is generally given in this format in most questions okay let's actually follow follow the you know keys ha huh. i can't switch yeah let's follow this t test cases i'll just solve i'll try to write some portion of the code for enoch one I don't want to waste time waiting for it to charge, so I'll just like do something and like show people. Um, call the solve function. Yeah, I'm assuming everyone can see the screen. The you know question is pretty simple. It's just like you're given a tree. Each node has a value which is a of i, and then you're given a bunch of queries, right? And in each query, you're given two nodes, and you have to find the LC of those two nodes. Ah, uh, sorry, the cost aggregate of those two nodes. So, say, uh, let's say I calculate pair int int LC equal LC ah uh, x equal LC a of u comma b. 
and then I say CL takes one second. Okay. And then this is a pair int int LCN int U int V. So the idea is that this pair should return LCA comma aggregate from U to LCA and LCA to V. Okay, this is what this pair, like this function should return. So we have this function. A uh, first line feature is contains two integers. Okay, then we also have this in the input, which is the tree itself. Everyone can like see what I'm trying to do, right? I'm, I've created an adjacency list. I'm filling the adjacency list with the trees information to whatever I get. And then I'll do a DFS from node one. Okay. The nodes are labeled from, I'm assuming one to something. Yeah, the nodes are labeled one based. So now I'm doing the DFS. In the DFS, notice what all information I'm trying to keep. I'm maintaining the heights right. and the height has a very simple recurrence, which is okay. also see n was 10 to the power 5. Now for 10 to the power 5, what login should you use? Uh, anything over 2 to the power 20 sounds good, right? I mean, 2 to the power 20 is 1e6, around 1e6. So anything above that sounds good, right? And now what we'll do is we'll do a loop on the adjacency list of u in the DFS. I'm assuming everyone is familiar with the basic DFS. I'm just writing a standard DFS. If v is equal equal pref, we continue because we have bidirected edges. Like it can be the case that we are at a node and we just saw the pre the parent. Oh, I haven't seen the no joke. I haven't seen the lunchtime question. I can't help very much. Otherwise, what we'll do is we'll do a DFS recursively, right? So now we have this height array and we want this parent array. This is the parent array that we were talking about in the question. That's the like the most important array, right? That we were referring to constantly. Shouldn't we have visited vector? You don't really need a visited vector because I'm doing, okay, in graphs in, okay. So this is a good question for generic graphs. In normal graphs, you need visited array for sure. In trees, you can do without it also. Because notice my check for whether I'm not going into something again and again is this. If V is prev, I'll just continue. Yeah. Right. If V is prev, then I'll just continue. And like, basically I won't go into the recursion again. So you can try to think that if this function will actually not keep on visiting the same nodes again and again. Okay. So in the DFS, we have this height, right? And then, okay. Now what all information can we store again, apart from this, we can easily store. What will the parent of you would be like the zeroth parent. That is the normal parent of you will just be prep, right? What will be the other parents? So this is an important thing. This is like the, probably the part that people were referring to how, uh, Calculating P U right. How do we calculate this array? This is the recurrence is pretty simple. It's just this P U I is equal to P of P U I minus one. I minus one. Ta -da. Okay. Uh, this is slightly tricky to get. And the first for the first time you see this, the idea is what? Okay, I'll try to explain this way. In uh, half jump equals p u i minus one. In second half jump is equal to p first half jump i minus one. Second. That's the idea. 
So let's say you're calculating P U five. That is thirty tooth parent of U. You can say thirty tooth parent of U is equal to sixteenth parent of sixteenth parent of U. Right? It's the same thing. Like basically, climb sixteen steps up and then ask that guy who's your sixteenth parent. So this thing, the sixteenth parent of U. Becomes first half jump. Basically, I broke this thirty-two size jump into two sem like half jumps. First jump is climbing the sixteenth parent of you, which is this thing, right? I'll just take the i minus four one, which is basically p u four, and then I'll ask. Okay, I'll ask the first half jump guy who sixteenth parent of the first half jump guy, right? This is basically P of first half jump four, and this is my kind of final answer P U I. This is the second half of the jump. So when I make the two halves of the jump, I just got the thirty tooth parent. Like this guy is going to be actually be the thirty tooth parent of you. Everyone gets this part of how I calculated. Okay, this is slightly tricky. So to calculate the thirty tooth parent of you, I say it's same as asking who's the sixteenth parent of. Sixteenth parent of you. So I say, let's say the sixteenth parent of you is some guy, and if I go to that guy, I can again ask that guy who's your sixteenth parent. If he tells me the correct answer, I can just go to that guy and I'm done. Like uh, a node's thirty tooth parent is equal to saying first jump sixteen steps up, and whoever guy you find at that position, ask him who is his sixteenth parent, and that's my thirty tooth parent. Okay, example. Let's say V is sixteen. Parent of you. Okay. Uh, I'll just draw this rough sketch so that people can get this idea. Let's say this is you. No, sorry. Let's say this is X. This is V. This is you. Right. What I'm saying is, and let's say the distance between you and V is 16, and the distance between V and X is 16. What I'm saying is, you will ask. Who's my sixteenth parent? That will come out to be V. So here, third sixteenth parent and like sixteenth parent of you will actually be V, right? Which is P U four. And then sixteenth parent of V will ask again. Ah, uh, this will be X. So I jump sixteen steps up by using P U four, and then from V I again jump sixteen steps up. To get me x, which is p v x. Uh, I'm not sure what Nilesh is asking for. Nilesh is saying, please also explain L C A using linked list. I'm not sure. I don't think there is any concept of linked list here. On trees, generally, you don't have any concept of linked list. I mean, you store the adjacent, you store the entire tree in a adjacency list, which is a vector, and then yeah, I don't. I'm not sure what you're talking about. I don't think there is any linked list thing. How do we have the sixteenth parent? Okay, ah, uh, we have the sixteenth parent because we already cal like look at this looping structure, right? We have already calculated the one, the two, the three, the four. So when we are calculating for i equal five, we have already calculated for i equal four, right? So we already so we already know p u four. We know this. Again, this part we already know P U four, and also okay because okay I'll write this at some place simpler and like slightly different way. I'm I'm confident that some people like might find this right more confusing. You can do this like this also. P U zero equal to F. Okay, now this is the height variable. Which is going to log in after the DFS. I'm doing this. So once the DFS is done, we only have the immediate parents. We only have this thing P U zero. That's it. We don't have anything else. Then we'll take each height, and for that height, we'll iterate over all the nodes. Okay. And once we're iterating over all the nodes, we'll say P J I equal P. P J I minus one, 
and minus one. Yeah, which is basically saying, I mean, the pseudo code was this pj minus one and pj i equal p v minus one. Make What are the prerequisites of this class? In least the prerequisites are uh, going through the content of ground theory week, which is like uh, DFS, BFS, adjacency lists. Yeah, at least that much. Adjacency list requires vector knowledge and like basic recursion. DFS requires basic recursion, etc. Yeah. So, do people get this part, line fifty nine? Like, just reply yes, no, or whatever in the chat. Because if people do understand. Okay, can you please explain why this ordering works? Okay, yeah, okay, nice question. The ordering works because I put the I loop outside and the J loop inside, notice this. I did this because uh, the idea is calculating each height layer requires you to know this stuff. Okay, notice this part, this line, V equal P J I minus one. Now, had you switched the order of these two loops, 55, 56, on line 55, 56, the issue would be that you might not know this value v p j i minus one because okay let's assume that we had switched these loops okay now notice when you're referring to this value okay it's possible that j is bigger sorry okay you'll calculate this value correctly probably yes you'll calculate this value correctly but notice when you're calculating this value it is possible that v is greater than j Right. When V is greater than J, the issue will be that your J is still here and you actually don't have the value P V I minus one with you. You don't have the correct value. So that's why you need to make these like these. Okay. Yeah. I'll explain this to code also. Okay. I think the battery thing should be done now. Not able to understand from DFS. Okay, they once asked, uh, they once could you explain your doubt more? Like, not able to understand from DFS, what do you mean? I mean, you, do you understand the current DFS? This is a pretty simple DFS. You are just calculating the heights, then you're calculating the parents, immediate parents. That's the zeroth parent, not anything else. And then if you're at, like, if you're referring to some previous guy, then you're skipping him. Otherwise, you're just going inside him. Yeah, so current DFS is simple. If you wanted to, okay, after the DFS, this portion, is it? Oh, not able to understand from DFS. Okay. After the DFS, okay, I'll just go through to the iPad once more. Yeah, it starts probably. Yeah, it starts. So I'll explain it through that. I think it's simpler visually. I mean, I get that this is. Yeah, okay. Can people see the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe they'll probably a lot more plain and just to explain this. Uh, don't overkill so much. I mean, it's a, it's a it's a tree. You don't really care about topological sorts or anything. It's a tree. It's not a graph. Don't think about like for trees. Just try to keep things that, as simple as possible. For graphs, yes, you do need concepts like topological ordering and stuff. For trees, you don't. Yeah. Okay. So we were here, right? Okay. I'll continue from here. Then I'll explain how to fill the PRA. So F U sixteen F V sixteen. And this also matched because uh, recall that we were saying that this is height differences. 13. Everyone remembers this, right? The height difference was 13 between these two guys. So we checked height 32, then we checked height 16, and both of them matched. Then we went to third. So we say, what is f of u8 versus f of v8, right? And u8 and v8 were basically meant eighth parent of u and eighth parent of v. This will not match. For the first time, we are actually play, picking a position where they don't match. So. Because these guys don't match, you can actually move u eight steps up and v eight steps up. Do you get this idea that take the highest power of two, which is 32 in this case, because n is 50, keep on dropping it. And the first time you find a place where these two guys don't match, make them jump that much. So now I'll make u jump eight steps up and make v jump eight steps up. So right now the tree looks like this, right? How will the tree look after the eight jumps? 
there'll still be this LC node, and then out of thirteen, I've killed eight. Right? How much is left? Five is left. So U is here, V is here, and um, sorry, this distance is five, and this distance is five. Right? Uh, the question that's going on is how to find L C A first. So both these distances are five, right? Now we have to make a jump of five. So again, after eight, you go one step more. Four. Are their fourth parents same or not? These two guys. They are not, right? Because this is the fourth parent of this guy. This is the fourth parent of this guy. They are not the same. So height of u comma four. Okay, technically we are not referring to u now. We are referring to u dash, which is basically u is somewhere here. U dash is this guy. V dash is here. V is somewhere. Yeah, u dash is here. U is somewhere here, right? This is was eight sized jump, and v dash is here. V is somewhere here, and this was also an eight sized jump. So uh, after dropping from thirty two to sixteen, then to eight, then we'll drop again to four, and we'll ask the same question: Is f of u dash comma four the same as f of v dash comma four? Are they the same or not? Can anyone answer this? In this question, u dash v dash h of u dash four h of v dash four. No. Okay, Devaker, this is L C A. How to calculate lowest common ancestor first? Yeah, correct. So they are not the same, right? And because they are not the same, you'll again make this jump. Basically, you'll keep on jumping in decreasing power of twos till the time you get to see that okay, they are not the same. They are not the same. They are not the same. So I'll again jump. So this goes here. Four steps up. This goes four steps up, right? How will they look now? I'll just make the tree again and again because it gets pretty dirty quickly, right? U and V will just be one step away from the LCA after this jump. Okay, technically this is U double dash. This is V double dash. Now after four, again decrease by power of like again decrease the power of two, which is two now. So I'll ask the, again the question: F of U comma two is it the same as F of V comma two? Yes or no? Sorry, u double dash, v double dash. P u two is four steps, but f u two is just two steps. F u this two is not referring to two to the power two. This is just referring to two, the value two. Yes, they are the same, right? So you won't jump because that's what we were doing here also. When the values were equal, we just used to decrease the power of two, but we didn't actually jump. When we mismatched, then we used to jump. Here we mismatched. Here also we mismatched. But here we are equal, so we won't jump. And just decrease the power of two. So from thirty-two we came to sixteen, then we came to eight, then we came to four, then we came to two. Now we'll go to the last power of two, which is one. And ask: Is f of u comma one equal to f of? Uh, sorry, I again keep on saying u, but it's actually double double dashed. Yeah, are they the same? Yes, they are the same. Correct? They are the same. So again, we won't jump till the time they come out to be the same. We won't jump. And that's it. The algorithm terminates. Once the algorithm terminates, what we'll do is we got to know this important information that okay. Now here's the conjecture. Once this algorithm terminates, you'll definitely be one step away from the LCA. The u dash, the u whatever value, u double dash triple dash whatever, and the v double dash triple dash whatever, they will just be one step away. So the final answer will just be return p u double dash zero. It's guaranteed that this is the conjecture. It's guaranteed that this is the LCA at this position at this time. I'll give you an example, okay, to make this more clear. Let's say we want this to be the LCA, and let's say we want the distance to be I don't know what. How much do we want? We want a jump of size eight. Then we want a jump of size two. Then we want a jump of size one. Eleven. Okay. Oh, that's pretty big. I can't do that big. Okay, let's say a jump of four and then a jump of one, five. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, and let's say there's a a lot of things about it. Okay, a lot of things. Blah 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 blah. And this is the U. This is the V. Now what will happen? You'll first ask who is the thirty two parent of U and V. So they'll be somewhere here. Use thirty-two parent, V thirty-two parent. They will be the same. You don't care. You jump. 
uh, you decrease from 32, you go to 16. Now you'll ask who's the 16th parent? Again, somewhere big, somewhere above. Skip, eight, eight parent. Okay, notice that this difference is actually five. Eight parent will also be somewhere above, right? Skip, four, notice. FU4 is actually different from FV4, right? FU4 is this guy, FE4 is this guy. They're actually different. So you'll actually make the jump. So you'll jump till here. So now U dash will become this guy, V dash will become this guy. Once we are here, now you'll ask, after four, you'll ask two. So for U dash and V dash, you'll ask who are their second parents, which is this guy. Right, but they are the same, so you won't jump, you won't do anything, you'll just skip this. Now you'll go one. Who are their first parents? You'll see this guy. Right? They are again the same, so you will skip this. Notice again, you ended up being at the position that's just one step away. So now again you can return your answer as P U dash zero. I mean, right now I picked a very cute value which was like four plus one, five, the difference being five. Let's say you picked some other value. Let's say you picked, I don't know, um, seven, no, 19, which is like 16 plus two plus one. What will actually happen is you will be here. We will be here. And the distance till the LCA is 19, right? This is the LCA. When you do a 32 jump, you'll exceed this. So you won't make that jump. When you do the 16 jump, you'll actually make that jump and come here and come here. Right. And then after the 16th jump, you'll try to make the eighth jump, but you'll exceed this. You'll try to make the four jump, you'll exceed this. Then, because this difference is only three remaining push. Then you'll make a jump of size two, you'll actually be able to make it. So you'll come here and you'll come here, right? And then you'll try to make a jump of size one, but you won't be able to make it because you're at the same position. So again, you ended up being one step away from the LCA. That's a common property. Do people try, like, can people see this property in this algorithm? That you keep on decreasing the power of two. Whenever the first time you mismatch on your parents' ID identity, you jump that much. Example with the height of even number. Okay, good question. Yeah, we should do more examples. Just get the idea. How much more? How much would you improve? 20? Okay, now 32 will again match, right? Somewhere above. 16 will mismatch. So let's say we come here and this guy comes here, right? After 16, eight will match. So we skip it. Four will also match. Notice four is the exact LCA. This was 16 and this was four. Four is the exact LCA. We'll match. So we won't jump that much. We'll now from 32, we went till 16. Then we went till eight. Here we, okay, at 16, we made the jump. At eight, we didn't make any jump. At four, we didn't make any jump because Yeah, at four, we didn't make any jump because at, at, uh, like if you jump four steps above, they both are equal at the very LCA. So you can't make that jump. The rule is you'll only make the jump if the parents are unequal, if the jumping positions are unequal. So at four, you don't make the jump. Then you go to two, two, you'll make the jump. So you'll come here and you'll come here, right? And you, how much have you consumed? You have consumed 16 and you've consumed two on both sides. Now, after two, you'll go one. You will again make that jump because you'll come just one step before. Notice for 20, what happened was we made the 16th jump. We made the tooth jump and we made the one jump. So we actually made 19 in total, right? 16 plus two plus one, we made 19 in total. Whatever your height difference is, like let's say this is 20, then you'll make 19 in total in this algorithm. And then eventually you just need to go one step above that position to get the LCA. If this is the odd number, let's say 25, then you'll make 24 in total. You'll always make one less, but that's no issue because you know that you'll make one less. We may be able to find the kth common ancestor. Kostab is asking, okay, Kostab, I don't get, we may be able to find the kth common ancestor. I don't get what you're saying. I'm not sure I'm getting the doubts here. Like they're, they're very mixed. If you're writing a doubt, try to write it together because other people are also asking. Just like write it once in 10, like one para. What if the difference is power of two? Then we will be zero steps away, right? No, they won't. Uh, think about this. Let's say, yeah, this is also a good question. Let's say you're 16 steps away. Now you'll try 32 steps 
you'll miss you'll match so you won't do that you'll try 16 steps you'll again match you won't do 16 also you'll actually do 8 right 32 won't jump 16 won't jump 8 will be the first time you jump and then after 8 you'll jump 4 then you'll jump 2 then you'll jump 1 This algo is for LCA. That's the lowest common ancestor. You're not trying to find the kth ancestor or anything. Yeah. I mean, you could use this parent technique for other things also. Yeah, we can modify it. Yeah, correct. Sorry, we can modify it to reach any ancestor. Yeah, because if you want to reach the kth ancestor, just break k as powers of two, and then just keep on going that much. Like for each power of two, just jump accordingly. In all these cases, the heights were same. Yes, Mister. The heights were same because. we had originally assumed right we did like a 30 minute discussion on this thing that when we were at mismatched heights here yeah in the first version we explained that when we were at mismatched heights let's say the height of u is 10 and the height of v is 40 our step one was to make the height same so we took the deeper guy and we said how much do we need need to move him up so we calculated the difference and we said that much we'll move him up somehow like in this example here was 6 here was 11 these two were the lca guys like the query guys and the difference in height was 3 right 6 heights is 3 7 11 height is 6 6 minus 3 is 3 so we said we'll make 11 three steps jump up and to do this three steps jump up we said break 3 as powers of 2 here and here this thing and then do the actual simulation of the jumps so do people get this idea that Oh, uh, once we have uh, once we are at the equal heights, we'll start from the biggest height, biggest power of two, keep on going down, tap 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 tap, and once we reach the first height where the parents actually start mismatching, we make that jump and we again keep on doing this. And like I tried to show it for a lot of examples. If it's still unclear, please ask because once I go into the implementation, your doubts won't be cleared. It they, they can only become bigger. Like. on the whiteboard it's the best place to actually clear your doubts about the concept itself like how is the thing why is the thing working when we start coding it it won't remain easy uh, surinder is asking can you tell the log square in approach also okay uh i mean i can tell it but honestly it won't be that much beneficial okay the idea is basically this so in here we did this thing right that the first few fs mismatch Uh, where is the diagram? Sorry. Yeah, the first few things mismatch. Then there is a match, and then they keep on matching, right? We did this. Okay, I'll first just explain it for high twenty. Yeah, cool. So this is this, right? This is high twenty. High twenty. Right now. If this is thirty, if you try thirty-two size jump, you'll skip. You, you'll match at the same thing, right? Because this is the LCA. Everything above is same. They'll match. The parents will match. So you won't try thirty-two. Now you'll ask sixteen. So you'll say this guy's sixteenth parent. This guy's sixteenth parent. They are different. So you'll actually jump up. So this will be U dash. This will be V dash. You consume sixteen spaces from here. You're only left with four. Here, right? After sixteen, you'll say eight. U dash's eighth parent will be above, and V dash's eighth parent will also be above. So they'll match in terms of value. So you won't jump. At sixteen, you jumped, right? At eight, you didn't jump. At four, will you jump? That's a tricky question because U dash fourth parent is the LCA, V dash fourth parent is also the LCA, but they are the same value. So you can't jump. That's the rule. So you again won't jump. You'll decrease the value again. Two, are the are their second parents the same or not? They are not the same. Because this guy's second parent is here, this guy's second parent is here, so you'll again jump here, and then after two one, are their first parents the same or not? No, because there is one more guy here and there's one more guy here, so you consume sixteen two one, and once you're here, notice how much have you jumped? You have jumped sixteen two one. You have made nineteen jumps in total, and you had to make twenty, so you're still one step away. and that's the conjecture that you'll always after this algorithm ends you'll always be one step away so at the end you can just return the parent the immediate parent of that guy and that guy is the lca we can make a jump at four right they want to ask him no like okay you could technically but our rule is very straightforward our rule is if the parents match then we don't jump 
So here, when we were at U dash and B dash, when we tried for four, our fourth parents were actually the LCA itself, and LCA by definition is the same guy, right? U's fourth parent and V's fourth parent both are the same guy, and our rule is simple: if they are the same guy, we don't, do. and we decreased and we just decreased power of two. So our algorithm was something like this: we took a very big power of two, let's say h two to the power twenty, okay, and we said while h not equal to zero. Right. If P U H not equal to P V H, then I'm oh, sorry. H is not actually two to the power twenty. H is just twenty. Okay. I was using F everywhere, but you can use P also, right? Because we are only talking about powers of two. We are not talking about anything else. If they are unequal, then we say jump U till its hth parent. Jump V till its hth parent. Yeah, and then h minus minus. This is inside the if condition. That's the algo. It's as simple as that. After reaching eighteen, what we'll do? Okay, here in this example is a twenty twenty example. I'm assuming you're talking about twenty example. So in the twenty example, once you make the sixteen jump, and then you make the two jump. Right, you're here, and this guy also made the 16 jump and the two jump. He's here. Notice your value of whatever power of two or whatever. It will be at two. We'll decrease it one more time, and it will become one. Now you'll ask, who's the first parent of this guy, and who's the first parent of this guy? Are they the same or not? They're not the same, right? Because LC is here. There's still one more node in between. Because there is one more node in between, and they're not the same. You'll jump. You'll actually do this jump. So eventually, your u triple dash will be here. And your v triple dash should be here after one, and then zero is killed basically after one terminates. Yes, son, you are correct. We can only apply this algorithm after we have made the heights equal. I am assuming both are at the same height. The step one was to make the heights equal, and then we run this algorithm. Can you clear P U construction? Okay, nice. So everyone understands this part, right? The binary jumping part. After the same heights, you take the highest power of two. And if they mismatch, you can jump that much. If they match after nineteen, uh, basically after nineteen you don't jump because here notice one after one gets terminated, and our conjecture was after the algorithm ends, u triple dash and v triple dash will be one step away. From LCA. That's what our conjecture was, and our algorithm currently does hold on that conjecture. We are so this algorithm doesn't end at the LCA. Let's clear that confusion. This algorithm doesn't end at the LCA. It ends one step before it, but that's also good enough, right? Even if you end one step before it, you can just call. Let's say you end up here. You can just call P U triple dash zero, and that guy is your LCA. This guy is the LCA. That's that's just the way this algorithm is implemented generally. That's why I'm saying that the algorithm, this algorithm, doesn't aim to end exactly at the LCA. It just aims to end exactly one step below LCA, and then you can just do this manual climb in one step. Is everyone clear with this now? That in like in the simulation itself, I was always ending one step before it, not at the thing itself. But it doesn't matter because I'm sure that I'll end one step before it, so I can just do the last step myself. This is order one. Okay, now we need the P construction, right? P array construction. So, for the P array construction, the idea was this. Okay, how should I write? Tricky, cause people to get a bit of data. It's kind of like a DP if you think about it. They want this as a standard algorithm. Otherwise, it's very hard to come up with this. I agree. You can't. It's very hard to figure this out on your own. It's like a record. Now it's a reputed algorithm, so you know it for a fact that this conjecture happens. But coming up with it yourself is, I think, is super hard. So in the last, we stop at eighteen. No, you don't stop at eighteen. You stop at nineteen because notice after two, you still go one here and then. 
the first parent mismatch and so you again end up here you end up at 19 not 20 if if the total size was x then you end up at x minus 1 in the cell algorithm okay when n is 19 yeah, yeah yeah sorry sorry yeah if n is 19 you'll end up at 18 i can show it one last time like let's say this is 19 you jump 16 right but you won't jump 32 because it will go too far now after 16 how much will you jump you can't jump four because it will go too far because this is the lca so you can't jump four also this jump can't happen you'll jump two and after jumping two you can't jump one because again you'll hit the lca so you just you end up here that's it so that's 18. i was uh, mentally i was doing 32 16 8 4 2 1 we didn't show it this time but yeah we were doing that right why not 2 to the power 0 i mean we did do 2 to the power 0 this is actually 2 to the power 0 in okay in 20 notice our last jump was of size 1 right which is 2 to the power 0 i was just saying the power of 2 not the exponent but like that is 2 to the power 0 You can't make the last jump actually if you try to think about it for n19 okay for n19 we didn't make the last jump of size one because we were matching the rule was that we won't we'll keep on jumping till the time we don't match if we are matching we won't jump that's the rule i mean obviously Faisal, you can try to think about variants of this algorithm and it might work it, that even if you do that it might work i'm not sure but the like the, this is the most widely accepted uh way like uh, thing like your method might also work that if you jump two to the power zero you still might get the correct answer but yeah i'm just explaining the most popular approach so now the pra construction the pra construction comes from the fact okay think about this okay so this will look like this p n h okay the first dimension will be the node the second dimension will be i again let's remind what's p u i PUI refers to 2 to the power ith parent of u. Okay, this was the definition of PUI. Now, notice if you compromise space complexity, why don't we stop every. Okay, please ask on, don't ask privately because other people can't read the question and like I have to repeat the question orally, which becomes hard for other people. If we compromise space complexity, why don't we store every parent and get the answer in two moves? Okay, Anchit, if you. Okay, your idea is that we store every parent, right? But notice it requires a lot of space. How much space does it require actually? It requires n square space, order n square. Let's say I give you a straight line as a tree. Then you'll require n square space. Each node will know its parent and all its parents. So the bottom most guy will know n guys. The second bottom most guy will know n minus one guys and so on. So it'll be n plus n minus one plus n minus two dot dot dot, which will sum up to n square by two or whatever. So order n square. If you require that much memory, that's anyways too much memory. And also to calculate this much, you will also require order n squared time. And n squared time in pre-calculation is a big time. Like time complexity will be n square before the query start. So your algorithm will be n square plus q times o1. Correct? That's what your algorithm will be. Like you take n square steps before the queries come. That much how that's how much time you take. And for each query, you answer them in o1. This part is good, but this part is very bad. Our current approach is something like this n log n plus q log n. Here, even if you give me a big n or a big q, it's still manageable. In your method, if n is small, then your approach is good because you got n square here, which is affordable if n is small, but here you got a pretty fast thing. But generally, n is not that small. If n is not that small, then you want something like n log n here, and you can afford some loss here. The loss here is from O1, I went to O login. Good. So yeah, PUI was to be calculated, right? And just remember the definition of PUI. That's the important thing. Okay, don't forget the definition of PUI. Now, what I'll do is I'll go layer by layer. So notice P question mark zero are easy to calculate. Can everyone see this? P question mark zero are easy to calculate for all question marks just in the DFS. In the DFS, I was writing this line, right? That, yeah, I can show it later, but like in the DFS, I was writing one line that basically in the DFS, I was writing uh, P U zero equal prep. 
right? So P question mark zero are easy to calculate. Now when we come to P question mark ones, what is P question mark one? Okay, example. Let's say we are talking about this node. Okay, in a tree, this node is U. Now what is P U one? It's this guy, right? So P U one is basically the second parent, which is first first parent, right? So that's uh, okay. Let's say this is U, this is A, this is B. Okay. Now to calculate P U one, what you need is you need to find Okay, who's my first parent, which is A, and who's his first parent? So for P U one, what all information do you need? You need P U zero, right? You need this information plus you need P of P U zero. I don't know how to explain this better. I mean, this basically means ah, uh, this statement basically means who's my parent? Okay, let me. Yeah. So okay, everyone was clear. How do we calculate the zeroth layer, right? Now to calculate the first layer, the idea is you know your zeroth parent, so you know your immediate parent, and he knows his immediate parent, so you can know your second immediate parent. So I'll write it more verbosely. Calculate alpha as p u zero. Okay. Then calculate beta as p alpha zero. Then p u one. Is equal to beta. Just try to understand these three lines slowly. The, okay, no, I won't use alpha or beta also. I use just simple variables. X y y y. So x is basically my first parent. Y is his first parent. X is first parent, right? So I am you. My first parent is x. His first parent is Y. So I say, ask my parent who's my first parent. He's X. He'll ask his first parent who's Y, and then I'll say, okay, my second parent is Y. Okay, yeah. Sorry, I made a typo here. So, nice catch. Right. So everyone gets the idea of how the first layer will be. So okay, notice I calculated the zeroth layer first for everyone. Then I calculated the first layer for everyone. Now I'll go to the second layer. So I'll do P question mark two, right? For P question mark two, I'll ask. Let's say I'm this U. Okay, this is X. This is Y. This is Z. This is W. Okay. Now I'll ask for P X two. What I'll ask? I'll ask for P X two. Who's my? Okay. Now this is like two to the power two, fourth parent. I ask who's my second parent, which is so. Okay, sorry, you. So x, no, not x. Here y is equal to p u one, right? This guy is the second parent, and then w is equal to p y one, correct? And then p u two is equal to w. Same idea, second parent or second parent, correct? That's the simplest explanation. So in general, P U I is equal to two to the power ith parent of U, which is equal to two to the power i minus one parent of two to the power i minus one parent. Of you, that's a slightly complicated way of writing it, but that's the correct way. That let's take i is five. So thirty twoth parent of you is basically sixteenth parent of sixteenth parent of you. This becomes sixteenth parent of sixteenth parent of you. Everyone understands this now. That thirty twoth parent of you becomes sixteenth parent of sixteenth parent of you, which can be written as so now. Try to understand this one line because a lot of people use it in their codes, and it's like important to get the grasp of this one line. It also makes your code concise. This is that one line that we were I was trying to show earlier. That you this is my two to the power i minus one experiment. So this is this guy, p u i minus one, 
and for that guy i'm asking his i minus 1th parent pu i minus 1 give me the id of that guy and from that guy i'm asking who is your 2 to the power i minus 1th parent and that guy is the answer so this thing comes here and this thing of this thing becomes this entire thing so is this expression clear take a, like take a like take one or two good minutes and like try to think of this expression okay it seems like people are getting clear with this concept but how these loops are working cool uh, the loops are working okay so i said right p question marks zeros are easy to calculate then we move to p question marks one then we move to p question marks two by question mark i mean all the values so the loop is actually for i goes from 1 to log n for j goes from 1 to n here i'll do p j i or okay not even don't use j just use u to keep it simpler and like because everyone is familiar with the u notation now so then p u i equal to this complicated expression just put it here that's how the looping works Correct the ones. So we're only calculating this thing in the DFS because this is the base case which we need from the DFS. The tree will give this us, give this to us. Once we have this, it's easy to see that if you if every node knows its immediate parent, then theoretically there is enough information in this array to calculate to calculate all the remaining things. So we don't need to look at the tree again. We just need this array, and then we can build this entire thing. But building this entire thing is important for future. because next later on we'll use this in the lca function correct uh is the looping structure also clear to people that i'm doing this first fixing this first and then looping over all the nodes automatically it's working recursively right yes some work yeah it's kind of like a dp in some sense that because you know the previous values correctly so you can calculate the new value correctly also but like the recurrence is important that you should understand theoretically the definition of this thing is the same as this thing so are there any doubts in the looping structure or anything i can jump into the code because the code is not that easy for this question like for just standard lca then we can add on the path aggregate thing the broad idea of the for the path aggregate thing is i'll explain it right now only let's say in the lca question itself Okay, I'll explain it with a very small example-ish idea. Yeah, let's say each node has a value also. Please tell me how is i going up to log n? Okay, i is going up to log n because that's how much you can jump, right? Remember the definition: two to the power i-th parent. You technically don't need n here. Okay, once this value reaches log n, this will become two to the power log n, which is n. So the nth parent. Now you'll never exceed this, right? You'll never. like there is no point calculating this value for big i's if you calculate i say 3 log n then you are actually saying 2 to the power 3 log n which is something like n cube but you don't have n cube nodes you know that after log n all the values are useless because you would have climbed the entire tree up right because because by the definition it's 2 to the power i th parent so once i becomes super big this value is useless because there are not so many nodes in the tree there are only order in nodes in the tree this value is only useful to us till the time it's log less than full log it also don't think about i that much always try to think about 2 to the power i here here also it's 2 to the power i this is actually 2 to the power i minus 1 this is actually 2 to the power i minus 1 the reason i'm not using the power itself is because to save space right now i'm defining this as p n log n in terms of memory usage had i used 2 to the power i's here it would use p n n memory that is n square memory that's too much that's why i'm using the exponent at those places the exponent is just being used for memory convenience conceptually you should still think of this as 2 to the power i 2 to the power i minus 1 2 to the power i minus 1 conceptually cool okay in the path aggregate question generally what happens is with your pui array right you also have a value array 
the idea is simpler similar uh, okay no, okay i'll give an example question now i'm hoping everyone is catching up with this and they don't have any doubts in the previous part if you have any doubts just put them there otherwise we'll just like i won't go through this again at least from a paper pen point of view right we'll just jump into the implementation okay i'm assuming not doubts yeah so if you have values here let's say this is 10 this is 12 this is 13 this is 5 this is 7 this is 9 this is 15 and your goal is to calculate max path query so let's say the question is from 4 to 7 what's the maximum value so from 4 to 7 what's the path the path looks like i'll color it in red this is what the path looks like right what's the maximum value there is 7 there is 9 there is 10 there is 12 there is 13 there is 5 so the maximum value is 13 right so let's say this the question is something like this then the idea is what is pui storing pui was storing to the power ith parent of you correct we'll have a new array value i which will store another important thing which will be max value by value i mean the values here at the side not the node ids okay by values i mean the values these are the values i'm actually in circle them value 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 okay these are the values not the node ids these are the node ids we don't care about them i mean node ids are used here obviously but value i is different value i denotes max value on the path from u to to the part i parent of u this is a super important thing like that's the generic idea so let me give an example This is the first pin. This is the second pin. This is the fourth pin. Okay. This value is let's say seven, three, nine. Okay. Let's put this as nine. So this is seven. So this is six. Put this as one. Then P U zero. Sorry. What will P50 be? P50 will be 4. Correct. What will P51 be? 3. What will P52 be? 1. Now, what will Val50 be? It will be 1. It's like from this guy to this guy. Okay. So, technically, I made a small I made a small blunder here. Uh, it's actually this. Okay. Max value on the path from u to 2 to the power i minus 1. 2 to the power i minus 1. Minus 1 is outside. Parent of u. On this path, what's the maximum value? So, val 5 0 will be this guy's own value because from path five to four from path five to five i'm technically talking about now what will val five one be can anyone tell me six correct because from path five to three but i'm excluding three i'm only talking about the one step before and what's the max value so that's six what will val five two be Seven, correct? Because from five till one, but I'm excluding one. I'm not considering up one also because it's minus one. So this portion and that's seven. Max value seven. Okay. So notice the way you calculated PUI, you can also calculate value i. That's the smart thing about this. So for value i, your recurrence will look something like this. Value i is equal to max of value i minus one comma 
val pu i minus one i minus one. Ah, it's very bad writing, but. Okay, so the idea of val array is okay. I explained the question. You got the question right. That sometimes you'll have a question in which you you'll be given two nodes u and v, and you'll be asked what's the maximum value on the path from u to v. Similar to p array, we also have a val array, which the idea will be similar. That on paths of binary lengths. So what was the idea of p array? That every node knew some information about its first parent, second parent, fourth parent, eighth parent, sixteenth parent, thirty-two parent, so on. Valerie the idea is similar every node will know some information about its path from itself till its first parent path from itself till its second parent path from itself till its fourth parent its eighth parent its 16th parent so on that's what the valerie is trying to know the max value on the path from u till its i to the right parent roughly right and the recurrence looks like this which is slightly tricky to understand but the idea is this let's say u is here okay And we are talking about the eighth parent. So there are a lot of values here, and you want to find the max value. The idea is either the max value lies here or here, either in the first four guys or in the next four guys. If it lies in the first four guys, you'll easily find it using this value i minus one. That is the first half of the jump. And if it lies in the second half, you'll find it using this. This guy points to this node, p fourth, like p u, and like. Four steps away, and after this, you're saying from him what's his max path here, and take the max of the two guys. So, for a range of size eight, you're saying divide it into two ranges of size four and four. Take the max of both the ranges, and that's the max of the entire range. The first range can be represented by this. The second range can be represented by this. Are people clear why the second range is this? That's the important thing. It's written slightly. Like I mean, it comes out to be slightly ugly. No, it's not leaving any value. Val five computes. Val five comma two computes. It's computing the max, right? It's not computing the sum. So val five two is technically computing the max value on this part from five till two. So there is one, there is six, there is seven, there is three. What's the max guy? It's seven. So it computed seven. It's not leaving any value in between. Yeah, it's not leaving any value in between. It's computing from itself till it's some two to the ith parent. So here it's fourth parent. So do people get this term now? That this is the second half of the jump, the max value here, and I'm taking the max over both of them. The first part. Which is this thing? The second part, which is this thing. Don't think how this val array will be used right now. We'll come to that later. Just think: Is my calculation of the val array correct? My style of calculating it, this recurrence thing, and by the definition of val array, obviously, you if this is how it's defined, if this is how it's defined, then is this recurrence correct? People have doubts, please. Put them on the discussion chat, or just say yes that if you understand this second part of the recurrence. Can you explain the difference again? The definition. Okay, the definition was: What's the max value on the path? So from five, what was five? Val five zero. What's the max value from five till five? And the max value itself is one. From five till its first parent, so from five till four, max value six. From five till its fourth parent, so five, four, three, two. Fourth parent means you are jumping four steps. So what's the max value on this part? I'll put it in there. This part. So the max value on this part is either three or seven or six or one, right? And the max is actually seven. So that's why here it's seven. Okay, that is confusing. Let me know. So, in the original method, what you did was you calculated parent array, right? What's your first parent? What's your second parent? What's your fourth parent? So on. Now I'm saying calculate another thing with it, which is what's my answer? What's this answer? 
what's this answer okay let me put it in a straight term that we will understand it better okay. yeah so val1 just denotes this answer okay val2 denotes this answer val3 denotes this answer from here i'm referring this guy so his let's say he is u then val u1 u0 denotes the max in this range val u1 denotes the max in this range in this range means this guy and this guy whatever the maximum value you are getting val u2 denotes the max in four guys two means to the power two so four guys so this guy this guy this guy this guy four guys right val u3 will denote the max in eight guys which will be something like so four guys fifth guy sixth guy seventh guy eighth guy so up till here <coughs> the answer you get the definition of val now who's the max guy in that on that part in this part in this part by me this node this node this node this node all these nodes yes omesh is pretty much yeah, bang on like he's quite correct that the idea is if you are doing a path query let's this is u this is v step 1 is find the lcf this is the lcf step 2 is get the aggregate from u till the lcf <coughs> this part step 3 get the aggregate from v till the lcf and then combine these aggregates max guy means the node no no i explained it earlier also max guy means the value ah uh, these are the values so we are taking max on the values i must i am assuming a slightly different question now i am saying each node has a value associated with it also example in the zor question that we are we were trying to do enoch one each node has a value associated with it and then the question becomes from u to v what's the maximum value that you see so in this example i was saying you have 4 and a 7 what's the maximum value that you see you, you don't have any node 13 but still the answer is 13 because from 4 4 has the value 7 2 has the value 9 1 has the value 10 Five has the value twelve. Seven, six has the value thirteen. Seven has the value five. On this path, the max value that you see is thirteen, and the val array is defined on these values. Then, what's the max value in this portion, or like whatever portion? Do people understand the <coughs> the thing that Omesh said earlier? That ah. Uh, you are breaking like from u to v you are breaking the question into find the lcf first which is this guy and then the entire path can be broken into two pieces u to lcf one part and then lca to v another part and we we'll combine the answers together and we'll get the final answer right so now i'll jump into the implementation i think we are done with the theory a lot because a lot of people conceptually do understand this but sometimes they mess up the implementation i don't think the like yeah the implementation is not considered that straightforward to be honest okay so we had this right and like okay for simplicity let's label this u okay does everyone remember this code we had in main t test cases the question was this the question was given t test cases each test case you are given n and q and you are given then given the number of nodes in the tree and the queries and you are given ai value associated and n minus 1 lines basically the, the tree itself is described and then two nodes and you have to find the zor on that path okay right now we were trying to do max on paper pen but now we lose zor it there is not much difference if you take any function it won't be that different Okay. Okay. So, do people understand the DFS up till the DFS at least the adjacency list creation? The DFS is being called the DFS. Pretty straightforward. It's H U P U. Okay. Also put value, which is just this thing, right? 
I'm assuming the people do understand value. Okay, actually, let's try to find just the LC right now. Don't care about the value. Just try to find the LC. Okay, so right now we'll try to do the simpler thing. That is find the LC. Okay. Right now we are doing a pretty useless thing, which is just printing out the LCS. But yeah, so we have P array and then we calculated this 2D array, the parents array, which is important. And people do get this recurrence, like line 37, why it's working. Okay, can I move forward? I, can, I can't see any S's. If it's clear, then I can move back and I can start coding array. Cool. So on the LC array now, you first check is my height greater than my neighbor's height? If yes, you swap them. Sorry, the reverse. So after this, for sure, h u h u equal h u. What's array a? Okay, array a is in this question, the Nutella path question. That each node is basically given some value. Eventually, it will be useful. Right now, it's not that useful. Eventually, it will be useful when we are trying to solve that question. Right now, we're just trying to find the LCA. Okay. Now you're trying to find the LC, right? Of U and V. So I say first swap them and make sure that U is the lower guy, the deeper guy. And the difference is basically H U minus H V. Okay. Now what we do is so we first, okay. So once we have the difference, step one, kill the difference, right? So we have this difference in diff. Now we say if diff and okay. now I'll explain this diff has i bit on then. Do people get this condition? Basically, it's saying diff and two to the power i. Is it zero or not? Okay, and it is non-zero only if ith bit is on in diff. That's how this condition works. It's a binary. It's a bit hack, but like yeah, bit manipulation. And basically, you're trying to kill the difference. Let's say the difference was ten in heights. So you're saying difference is eight plus two, right? So I'm iterating over all powers of two from zero to login. And for each power of two, basically I'm trying, is that power of, is that bit on? Okay, in 10, what's the binary representation looks like? It looks like this, right? So I first try the zeroth bit, which is this guy. Then I try the first bit, then I try the second bit, then I try the third bit. Whenever I see a one, I, this condition is triggered and I climb that much steps up. Is this clear that after this step, I have to remember what we discussed in the notes. That we had this conjecture, right? That after killing the difference, we'll have we'll be at the same height. And there will be two cases. One case is a simple case when both the both the guys are same. The second case is the complex case that is both the guys are actually not the same way. So we're now at the complex case. Before this, is this portion clear? Uh is mainly this portion. If it's not clear, please ask in the notes what's the exact doubt. I'm assuming it's clear. Otherwise you can just message on the group the chat that what, which step is not clear or like is the diff not clear? Is the if condition not clear? Is the I loop not clear? Whatever. Yeah. Now we start with the highest power of two, right? And we keep on going down one step at a time. Remember that we used to do 32, 16, blah, blah, blah. That's what I'm saying here. Please can explain the if condition again. Okay. The if condition is basically if say the difference is 13, how does the binary representation look like? It looks like this, right? So I'm saying in the binary representation, start from the least significant bit and 
that's why i goes from 0 to log n like in ascending order and for each bit see if it's on in diff or not diff is the height difference if it's on if it's switched on then make that much size to jump so here i'm just trying to say in simpler words is the ith bit of the diff on or not the way you check that is you say okay 1 to the power i is actually 2 to the power i sorry one bit shift i is actually 2 to the power i i assume you might not know this but this is actually bit shifting so what this means is take one shift it i times so the number of zeros that you see here is basically i zeros so this is actually equal to 2 to the power i in binary in binary right so 1 to the power i is actually 2 to the power i uh, sorry one bit shifted i is actually 2 to the power i so i'm comparing and this and of this is the and operation right this is the ampersand so diff and 2 to the power i i'm just comparing the diff in binary in its binary representation and 2 to the power i in its binary representation think about it diff looks like this and 2 to the power 0 looks like when i and them together it looks like so it's not zero that means zeroth bit is on had this been 2 to the power 1 then it would look like and the and will look like so the and will be zero right in this case in the first bit because the 2 to the power 1 is this just look at what the 2 to the power i will be 2 to the power i in general will be the only one of the positions will be one which is the ith position like these are i minus 1 zeros technically is the condition clear now 2 to the power i in its binary representation and diff in its binary representation we can also reverse this too no yes you can yeah But you can't reverse this loop. That's the important thing. You can reverse the previous loop. You can't reverse this loop. Now, are we doing jumping from? And we are jumping for above right. Above right. I don't get what you're saying. And we are doing for jumping above right. To me, e u equal ah uh, same heights, same heights. Yeah. So this entire portion was kill the difference and make them same height. This was step one. Now step two is here, which is at same height. Start going from. Kill, uh, make the jump. If the ancestors mismatch. Okay. So if h of sorry, if p of u i is not equal to p of v i. then you say we'll make the jump that's pretty much it i mean the second part is literally this yeah okay so i'll just remove these lines so that it's Okay. Now, do people get the after case one? Basically, at the same height, either they are the same. So line twenty three gets triggered. If they are not the same, we take the highest power of two. We keep on decreasing one step power of two, right? Although, like I'm just taking the exponent here. Don't start with log n because that's the size of the array, lower flow. Right? Log n access element is not accessible. Log n minus one is accessible. And then for each guy, you just say pui equals like if they mismatch. If the ith parent of u and two to the power ith parent of u, right, and we claim, and eventually, conjecture here. What was the conjecture? That one step away 
from the LCA, right? That was the conjecture. So to get to the LCA, I calculate X, which is basically the LCA, which is just one parent of you. That's it. Do people get this now? The second part, basically. I'm doing in decreasing powers of two. For each guy, I'm saying if the parents mismatch at that level, like the two to the power eighth parents mismatch, then I climb that much up. So remember from the samples that we were talking about, say the height difference was 20. Then when you try I equal five, so you have two to the power five, 32. So 32th parents will match. Then 16th parents won't match. So this condition will actually be triggered for 16th. Then eighth parents will match. Okay, how are we knowing that changing U and V will not exceed LCA? Good question. So after this point, when the heights are same, LCA of U comma V is equal to LCA of PU zero comma PV zero. Think about this. So, and you can keep on doing this. LCA of PU, uh, I mean, F of U comma two, F of V comma two. The LCAs will remain the same. If both of them are climbing at the same speed, if both of them are climbing five steps up together, then the LCA will still remain the same. Obviously, once you hit the LCA, like you can't keep on defining this, but like till the time you haven't hit the LCA, this value keeps on being the same. Here, LCA of you can't be just minus here. Because the heights are same. Had the heights not been same, you can't see this. This is important. Like heights being same is very important to be able to say a statement like this. Okay, here uh, you might have forgotten. F of U H meant H parent of U. That's what we defined it in the notes. Right. So everyone gets this. Why is this thing working? Good. So okay, do we want to try this first? Like just like compile this code and like actually see that it's working or not. Also, let's make this portion simpler. I just say we return this. One question, question five, two, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Then one has a child two, one has a child three, two has a child four, two has a child five, three has a child five. Okay. I did something bad, I think. So N and Q come, then N elements, then this UV. Okay, so the tree was this much. Yeah, so one had two children, two and three, right? And uh, two had two children, four and five. So what's the LC of three and five? Think about it. The LC of three and five is actually one, which we did print out correctly. Right now, we are not actually tackling the original question, which is asking the Zora value of the path. We are just saying, what's the LC of three comma five? So notice three comma five LCS is five. I can take another example in this question only. What's the LC of three comma five? It's one. Okay. What's the LC of four comma five? Four and five are just like the LCS two. So I'll just put these two guys, and it comes out to be two. Cool. So everyone can see it's working, right? I mean, obviously these are not strong enough test cases to be able to see, but yeah, I'm confident that it's working. I think it should be. Yeah. Okay. Now we calculate the Valerie also. Okay. I'll add the Valerie and just show you what the, how it will work. So first, how will the base case look like? Val u0 will be a0. A u. Val, what does Val denote? The key, remember that. The aggregate on that part. Correct, the aggregate on that part. Now, so value zero will denote A zero. What will the uh, the remaining DFS will look exactly the same. Now here, we were calculating this value, right? We'll also calculate value Y, which is max. Okay, in that question, I was doing max. Here we'll do ZOR because the question is asking us for ZOR. So ZOR is this thing. Correct. 
also make sure that this is an important thing e 0 i is equal to 0 and val 0 i is equal to 0 also these are basically notice once you jump a lot of up like basically let's say n in question is only 100 but your i is let's say 10 then technically you are referring to 2 to the power 10 which is 1024th parent which is not defined but our implementation still works why because notice i do a very hacky thing here which is i say parent of 0 is 0 itself so basically it's a self loop at the top of the tree so the top of the tree is 1 parent of 1 is 0 and then parent of 0 0 itself so it keeps on looping over there 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 so basically 1024th parent of 0 is also 0 by definition right so you don't have to care about that nitty gritty detail that can you go to capital login or not because even though capital login yes two to the power zero yeah like yeah omish you're correct val of this guy is itself the value itself and also yeah val of zero is zero okay it can't be five or anything because i want to keep here the identity function for zor this is important to get the idea of because notice i might sometimes unnecessarily zor this thing with val zero i'll give an example let's say n is small i is big okay you're calculating value i if the value i entire portion is actually inside value i minus one because you've already hit the fucking ceiling like i is already 10 so value 9 already actually consists of the entire thing because 2 to the power 9 is still 512 which is bigger than 100 but you are still zoring it with something so this thing should be identity that is after zoring with this thing it shouldn't affect your answer mehul we are asking we are discussing enoch one not so that's why this is identity i won't explain this much in detail when i see zor i think it goes on the property on the plantation because so there is an alternate solution which is, which involves our properties i'm just i'm doing the more complex solution to just show you the path aggregate idea i mean here i'm doing the zor operation but you could replace it with the max operation for all you know if you wanted to do that exactly i you're correct yeah you got the idea right yeah that if you're doing for max and negative values can be there then zero is incorrect then you would need int min identity function for uh, basically something like an identity function for max yeah because basically once that's applied we want it to be like have no effect because technically there is no node zero we are just fictitiously creating it there actually doesn't exist a node zero in the tree we're just using it for convenience so that we can still use this capital login and not try to find the actual login had you used a different implementation idea, then you would see n is 100. So your small login will actually be uh, 6 or something. Basically, you'll actually calculate what's the highest power of 2 I can go to and only calculate values up till that point and not calculate unnecessary values. But that's another implementation idea that you can use. I mean, that's the alternate implementation. Okay. Now, our LCA function will start returning a pair. So earlier it was just returning the LCA. Now it will return a pair and what will be the values of the pair it will return lca value like sorry lca of u comma v and um zor on the path from u to v the entire path so it will just have the fucking answer in the second attribute it will have the entire answer so you'll just print out the second value and you're done Okay, like that's what we want. Okay, so we have the Valerie, Valerie. Now I'll delete these lines or, okay, maybe I won't delete these actually. You do the, okay. Now you'll have this int arms equal zero. 
okay and eventually you want to return something like this something like this so how in the step one when you're killing the difference you'll also try to update the answer right the answer will also keep on climbing up as you're climbing up pui like the answer will basically the answer will say add this contribution to my path till the time the height becomes equal I keep on adding these contributions and also when you reach if you reach the height itself then you can just return the answer you're done let's think had u and v been same this difference would be zero you'll come here you'll come here you'll come here you'll come here you won't return the correct thing notice so you need to actually do sort it with the last thing right okay answer do people get this answer up till here does not include the last value had you printed just the answer it would be wrong you actually need to sort it with a u itself also yes no anything if you don't get it also please speak up or put it in the chat yeah the reasoning was that you have this answer right and you sort it with some things but notice that we had this minus 1 in our definition of the answer and so you'll actually exclude the last value by mistake example assume u and v come out to be the same in the lca question let's say u and v are actually the same then this thing won't trigger the difference will be zero because the difference is zero this if condition will never be triggered and you'll come here at line 27 and your answer will be zero it hasn't run this line ever so you you're technically giving the wrong statement out you actually need to sort it with a u because your answer is not zero you, uh, a single length path also consists of itself right and then okay here then you are jumping only then you should update your answer so when you jump what will you do you will do answer equal answer zor val ui zor val vi Right, but whatever answer we have on the paths, just aggregate them with the new jumping path answers that we are getting, which is value one and value two. And eventually, we'll again answer the orders. Uh, so I'll write this like this, so that it's clear. Right. and notice that we will be one step away so because we are one step away lca has not been included in ants till now can you believe in working okay so you remember what's the definition of valerie right and if you remember the definition of valerie which is basically valerie's val u y is equal to a uh, zor of the path from node u to h to the power i minus 1 parent right that's the definition of value y now once you have the definition of value y you can see this construction line 74 that i'm just taking zor the first half of the path with the second half of the path and once you have zor the two paths this is the first part is easy right this is the value i minus 1 this is the first part first part first half of the path and this is the node that that is the starting point of the second part second half and then the the entire thing is the second half once you sort both of them you have this value i array now i change my lca function to say it will return a pair and the second value of the pair will be the answer itself so it will return lc of u comma v and the zor of the entire path from u to v that's the answer itself to get the answer i'm saying have this answer variable and whenever you make a jump using p array update the answer 
also that time basically whenever you make a jump using pra what you're doing is you're consuming some part of the path so when you're consuming some part of the path also consume its zor value in your answer array in your answer variable so when i jump here on line 23 i also consume this part because when i'm jumping up till this position i'm kind of like forgetting about these nodes that i'm jumping over so to account them in my answer i am zoring them also right and then here also when i'm jumping over use some ancestry like to some parent of it and v's parent of like parent of v's then technically i'm removing some portions of the path i'm think about it this way from u to v there is a path and i'm shortening the path step by step till the time i hit lca from both the ends so when i'm shortening the path from both the ends um whenever i shorten the path i the path that i removed has to be consumed also by the zor variable by the answer variable so that's why i'm zoring it again and again with the correct values which you can see here this is the vals the valid is the idea clear now yeah th thinking about this way is i i think actually simpler that u to v there is actually a path and you're killing you're making the path shorter and shorter by making u and v come up in the tree and whenever you come up in the tree you are killing some portion of the path and the pa pa portion you're killing has to be consumed by your zor variable so that's pretty much the implementation We got four and two. Hmm, interesting. Okay, I think I got mismatched on the answers. I'll try to figure out what the bug is, if there is any. Okay, three to three, I got the correct answer. Huh, three to four, will I get the correct answer? Let's see how the tree looks. Okay, three to one. I got one. Is that correct? No, I should get two. I think. Oh, wait. Okay, so I have some bug. I think. Okay, now let's say the question query is from three to one. I get two, but actually the zor should be one zor three, which should be two. Oh, okay. So I got the correct thing. Sorry, my bad. So I'm getting the correct thing for three to one and for three to five, I'm getting the incorrect thing. So three to one, I'm getting the correct part. Then three to two, what am I getting? Am I getting zero? No, I'm not getting zero. Okay, so there is some bug. Nice. So let's try to debug this. Okay, you can see how I try to debug this. I mean, sometimes it gives useful ideas. I'll just print a lot of statements first, just to see which variables are actually mismatching probably. And I see this. Hmm. Okay, I think I know what the issue can be. After the step, and then okay, so three and two, u was three, v was two, answer was zero. Okay, pretty much every time the answer came out to be zero. Wow. Hmm. So we never actually made any jumps. That's the issue, right? Yeah, because. Three and two are just one step away from the LCA. So we never actually made any jumps. And then that's why the answer never took those values into account. 
Okay, I understood the error. The error was here, I think. Yeah, in the jumping portion eventually. It should have been this. Again, here also, I'm not sure what this thing should be. Should it be value zero or should it be? I think it personally doesn't matter. I think it should be a U only. Yeah. I'm not entirely sure whether it takes the bug or not, so I don't want to explain right now. I thought process. Okay, three, two claims out to be correct now. Try three, five. Okay, I think I've got the bug correctly, but like I'm not entirely sure. But like the idea was that when you're here at the the answer at this stage, it will not have the topmost guys and the LCM. It won't have all these three things. So I added all these three things manually because the topmost guy won't be there because when you're jumping, the definition was that yeah, the Valerie actually doesn't keep that guy inside it. So you actually need to put him. And you also need to put the LC in. Right. But here you just need to put the value in because let's say, okay, how's the case? U is at the bottom, V is at the top, right? U is at the bottom, V is at the top. You'll climb some steps up. You'll come up till one step. You'll run one step short. Yeah. So you climb, you will climb, 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 climb. And hit this position, but he won't have this value itself. So he'll add himself. Yeah, I think this is correct. Hundred percent sure this implementation is correct because of the last portion. But like, hmm. Okay. Have we have we submitted the correct thing? Let's go see that. Is it the correct code that we submitted, or will it be submitting something incorrect? I think we submitted the correct thing, right? Yeah, we submitted the correct thing. Okay, TA lead. One issue can be fast IO. Because we didn't use fast IO, uh, printf scan of yeah. I'm thinking of that sort only. But the issues there only. I mean, I don't think we are doing anything super slow in our approach.
let's just see this again. t is being taken then u and v are being taken oh sorry nah, this was a lame bug i'm not clearing the adjacency lists yeah i didn't check whether i'm clearing all the data structures or not so i should clear the adjacency lists yeah and what else what else global arrays we have we have p h well these will all be overwritten correctly next time yeah but like at clearing the adjacency list was important which we didn't do yeah even that will cause a tle because your adjacency list will be filled again and again and again and again eventually you'll like run you'll be iterating on like two big lists very big list and even it won't be a tree so it will be infinite recursion yeah. okay so yeah keep in mind uh, i mean somebody also mentioned this that i was not using visited array the loss was because i was not using visited array if i don't do this think about what was happening i was putting in more and more stuff in the adjacency list as more and more cases went by right and because more and more cases went by i was putting more stuff in the adjacency list and the thing was not a tree like say i it's kind of like saying i combined the in the second test case i would be combining the adjacency list of the first and the second of the first case and the second case so you're combining two trees superimposing on one on each other so it won't be a tree anymore right it it can be a graph generic graph and because of that my dfs will run into infinite recursion because my dfs assumes that i can only have one guy as my parent so i only need to avoid him but if there is a cycle say there is a triangle if there is a triangle in the graph then this dfs is infinite look on that triangle i can keep on going through that triangle again and again and again because you will see like let's say prev goes to u goes to v goes to prev now u will not go to prev but he'll go to v we will not go to u but he'll go to prev and it will keep on happening so probably the tle came because the dfs was going into infinite loop yeah anyways so this technique works right so this is the lca thing uh it's quite long i feel uh i mean is there any general consensus or whether people want to have the second thing also or not right now or are people tired if people are tired we can probably have another graph session sometime later for the second topic which is like bfs or extra surinder so as a software engineering point of view there is not much benefit as a generic coding practice people don't recommend to do this but in comparative it's preferred because so the solution had nothing to do with that concept correct if you are using this technique there is an alternate approach to this question which is much simpler and i would recommend you to try that out the approach is something like this i can give the uh, i can give the actually the uh, int zor from root n okay and in the dfs okay i want to move this code let's see what can i do okay um i'll just copy this file okay yeah so in the, your question was uh yeah it's passing around less parameters also when you're passing around parameters you have to make sure that you're doing pass by reference and not pass by value sometimes people make this mistake that they by mistake do pass by values when they do pass by values in a lot of functions the time complexity becomes a huge pain because let's say you're passing a vector and the vector has n elements and if you're passing it by value then you're technically doing an entire copy constructor on the vector it takes a lot of time in global you know that you're not passing things so you don't have to keep that mental overhead that am i passing things or not Okay, I'll show the simpler solution to this question, which is like super short, and it it exploits DFS property. Uh, sorry, Zor property.
Okay. So you have this right. You cleared the adjacency list. Then you had NQ, UV. You took the adjacency list. You do a DFS. In the DFS, you have this additional parameter now. What's the ZOR up till now? So ZOR from root till now. Just make this super big long variable. Right. So ZOR from root till U is basically this value. And then whenever I'm going inside the DFS, I take this value and I ZOR it with the new node that I'm going to. Right. So basically this value stores like this stores ZOR from root u is equal to ZOR of the path from u to root. Right. Everyone gets the how this value is calculated and why it's calculated correctly. Now the answer is pretty simple. The answer is just The answer is almost this, but not exactly this. So okay. and notice what will this answer variable look like? The ZOR has this property that X ZOR X is zero for all X in integers, right? This property is there. So when you have, let's say a path from U to V, which can be broken as paths from U to root and root to V. Okay. Now ZOR of path from U to root. When ZOR with ZOR of path from root to V, a lot of stuff cancels out and it becomes ZOR of path from U to LCA, ZOR, ZOR of path from LCA to V, uh, sorry, technically LCA minus one and V to LCA minus one. Do you get this idea that basically everything above the LCA, they cancel out with themselves. Let's say the LCS node seven and above it, there are five nodes till the root. Then all those guys just cancel out their ZOR values, including the LCA. The LCA also cancels out its ZOR value. So that's why you need to eventually ZOR again with the LCA because the LCA is not included. So if you just do this much, then your answer will be this. If you just do the first two ZORs, your answer will be just this much. ZOR of path from U to LCA minus one. ZOR with ZOR of path from V to LCA minus one. But you won't have the LCA itself. So you need the LCA also. So you say in the last statement, answer is equal to answer ZOR A of LCA of U comma V. Obviously, I deleted the LCA array and everything. But if you have if you have the LCA function with P Com. then just use it right this won't work right now but like that's the idea okay previous approach approach akash was much more general we didn't exploit this property that things cancel out so in zor there is this property right that x or x is zero and that's why the the paths just cancel out above the lca so this question is slightly easier i mean if the question was take the max on the path or min on the path or GCD on the path, something of that sort, then you don't have this property that for answer from U to root combined with the answer from V to root will give you something useful. In this case, it was giving you something useful. Notice answer from U to root, which is this thing and combined with the answer from V to root actually gave you a very meaningful value. But for mins, maxes, this value is pretty useless because it will have the like had this question be on max, then this value would be used. And like, let's say you did, you had this max and you did a max on both these values. Then you can realize that this value is useless because it might be the case that the root itself is super big. Like let's say a of root is, I don't know, plus infinity. Then answer will become plus infinity and it won't be meaningful. You don't have any information. You can't cancel stuff out from max. 
if had it been an additional subtraction question you could still do that but because it's a max question you can't cancel stuff out so the previous approach was much more generic where we only like where we only consumed information on the path we didn't consume any extra information so we didn't need any property like this of cancellation because we were not consuming any extra stuff even max will work because we are not going above the lca anyways from lca to root that path is untouched in the previous approach in this approach he the 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 problem setter exploits this property that the path from root to lca will actually come twice and zor cancels when things are zored twice he's using that property that's why the solution is much simpler just just knowing how to get the lca works you don't need to know how to do path aggregates on lcs yes if you are trying to calculate max with the whole path whole path hasn't from that node till root then this is useful yes then you can have max from root or max from root whatever max from root array but if you are not going till if you don't want to go till root then it's useless because then this information is kind of giving you something that you don't want you can't cancel stuff out from max if you have max of a path of big path you can't subtract a small path from it but in zor you can do that in zor just zor that small path again if you have the zor of a big path just zor that small path again and that will cancel it out in addition also you can just subtract that path is it possible to do such question using something different other than generic approach on such problems as generic one might be lengthy i mean this one was the slightly special approach man which we in which we just calculate the lca okay in this question i know that you have to calculate the lca no matter what i don't think there is any there would be any solution which doesn't even calculate the lca to calculate the lca the one approach is binary climbing which i showed you guys so lca can be calculated by binary climbing also it can be calculated by segment tree on euler tour i'm not sure if you know this so euler tour is basically a technique on how do you represent a tree as an array and then you run a segment tree on it it's slightly complicated i can maybe share some links then there is a square root and technique also what do you mean by generic approach the previous one is it i don't get what do you mean by generic the word generic if you meant the previous approach then yes that approach is much more applicable like that approach will work on every question of path aggregate yeah the previous approach will work on like almost all path aggregate questions whereas this approach was specific to zor like only in zor we can exploit this max from root prop zor from root property but like had the function means slightly different or yeah something else was asked then obviously the previous approaches oh, it can be lengthy slightly i agree but it's like it's a superset power to some sense that it can solve more questions than this thing yeah and it might be slightly slower also by a log n factor or something like yeah like slightly slower it's possible that it's slightly slower like maybe this method might get you open somewhere like if had you not been able to not have to calculate the lc because if you make error in cases it would become a headache agreed it just does become a headache i mean that's why you do printing and stuff but anyways you have to find the lc in most of these questions so if you are writing the lc code itself then adding the path aggregate is just like 5 7 lines like adding the val array everywhere at correct places is just like 10 line change or something so if you can write the lca function itself correctly then making it path aggregate is relatively simpler i would say writing the lca function correct itself e itself for the fast log n one is challenging but i think it's required like okay binary climbing is probably the simplest method to be honest uh sure so if you know what euler tour is which is basically a array representation of a tree then what you do is if lca of u to v becomes uh okay so in the array representation what you do is for each element of the array can you please explain or oh, line 34 okay i mean you can't subtract okay by the word subtract here i mean a very particular thing 
okay example let me give you let's say path 1 2 3 4 5 has max equal 30 and path 3 4 sorry uh, okay and let's say path 3 uh, yeah 3 2 1 max equal 20 no max equal again 30 now can you say what is the max of the path 5 4 3 you can't write even though you have these two variables you have these two variables you know the max of the big path and you know the max of the small path but you still can't say what's the max of the subtracted path Whereas in ZOR, you could say that you could cancel out stuff. If this is the ZOR and this is the ZOR, you could just say ZOR be, be, be basically take the bigger ZOR and ZOR it with the smaller ZOR. So it becomes zero. So you know that the smaller path has a ZOR of zero. But you can't do that with max, min, GCD. You can do it with sums and ZORs mainly addition subtraction and ZOR. that's the thing that cancels out basically the function needs to have an inverse that something for every x there should be a y such that uh x operation y becomes identity notice in addition subtraction you also have a y if your x is five then y is minus five and your identity is zero in ZOR, if x is zero five y is also five and identity is zero, but you don't have this in max and min. If X is five, no matter what you do, you can't reach identity. Uh, maybe if X is minus three, you can say that Y can be zero, but for X is five, there is no Y. No matter what Y you put your max of X comma Y will come out to be greater equal five, which is not equal to identity. So, yeah, so in the LCA, u comma v basically becomes min, sorry, max height of a node in the subarray from u to v. By subarray from u to v, I mean in the subarray starting at node u and ending at node v. Yeah, that's what the LCA becomes. So because it's max height in a subarray, this becomes a range min query on a subarray in a segment. Right? I mean, I can't explain the Euler tour itself, but like the subarray thing basically comes from the Euler tour. That's why you use segment on Euler tour. Yeah, even segmentary or sparse tables or whatever. So segmentary on Euler tour is still order log n. If you're interested, you can read up on sparse tables on an sparse table and if you use sparse table in order tool which is kind of like a segmentary but slightly weaker that you can't do updates but okay so sparse table versus segmentary uh for those who know it the difference is sparse table can't do updates only one time construction is allowed but faster query for one query segmentary can do updates in login. Okay, I mean, you can do updates from sparse table also, but it'll take order n, so it's pretty useless. And slower query for login. So if you use sparse table on Euler 2, then you can find LCA in O1, which is pretty good. Like you can actually find LCA in O1 also, if you want to. But I, People generally don't prefer to write this because it's so tedious and so long and because login generally doesn't make a lot of loss. So binary climbing is, I think, generally more preferred. Yeah. Okay. I am, I don't think people would pro prefer to do that, like the second topic today, because this went on for very long and it's quite tiring, I feel. Akash, I don't think so. And like, I think we'll end the session right now or like in five minutes and yeah, I think maybe we can have the second part of the session next week or something like on some big day. But yeah.
Okay, and you guys can like fill the feedback form also. Yeah. 